you don't need a website headline to reach anybody. Exactly. You, you reach 20, 30, 50 million people like that. Yeah, to the phone, right? To the phone. Uh, you're saying you're doing that to communicate what? Monique, why is she canceled? Mm hmm. Got I you. had to revisit that because it was like, it didn't make sense to me, babe. I'm like, so what did she do? She said something you didn't like? like so she didn't work for 13 years after that? Right. Only for Tyler Perry to admit he did start a rumor that I was difficult to work with. He lied. Do you know, Shannon, that's cost my family tens of millions of dollars? Yeah. Over a lie and a rumor? Cat Williams has been throwing shade at Tyler Perry for quite some time, but it seems Perry hasn't been phased at all. Maybe it's because Williams lacks the guts to really go for the jugular, especially online. However, Perry's luck might be running out because someone who's notorious for not holding back on social media is dropping hints about coming after him, and that someone is none other than 50 Cent. So, what exactly is going on? Last year, 50 Cent said he launched a campaign to help revive Monique's acting career and recalled a private conversation he had with Tyler Perry in defense of the Oscar-winning actress. The hip-hop mogul appeared on Big Boy's Neighborhood in January, where he addressed Monique's casting in season two of his Starz series BMF, and how he helped reignite her career after claims of being blackballed by Lee Daniels, Oprah Winfrey, and Tyler Perry. While addressing cancel culture, 50 recalled confronting Perry about the role he played in Monique not getting cast in any major roles. I was like, cancel, like Monique, why is she canceled? The rapper then spoke about how Tyler Perry never stood by Monique as she was getting canceled. He said, and he was like, no, nah, I, I never told no one not to work with her. And I said, but you Tyler Perry and you never told anyone to work, work with her. 50 expressed his confusion about why Mo was out of work for 13 years because of something she said. What also shocked 50 more is the fact that Monique spent over a decade calling out Lee Daniels, Oprah Winfrey, and Tyler Perry over claims they worked together to blackball her for not doing promotional press for the 2009 film Precious. In fact, back in February 2022, Monique came forward with receipts of Perry's behind-the-scenes behavior where he demanded Monique apologize to him for the blackball claims before he would agree to a sit-down with her. Tyler Perry, eventually the people will see, listen, and do something about you not keeping your word. I am not going anywhere, she captioned an Instagram post at the time. Meanwhile, in March 2022, 50 Cent said he wants to see Monique dominating Hollywood again, so he's taking matters into his own hands. The candy shop MC said he was going to put the comedian back on, but before then, he wanted to give a few individuals a chance to make amends with the alleged blackballed star. I'm sure Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry would not want to continue to allow their influence to damage Moe's career, and this has went on for way too long, 50 wrote. So now would be a great time to apologize because I'm going to put her back on. I don't miss. 50 Cent has been lobbying for Monique's Hollywood return since watching the comic perform live during Super Bowl weekend. After praising her fire show, he chastised fans for canceling the Parker's actress and shared his desire to see her back on top once more. We only supposed to cancel that ish ain't good for the culture. We need you to win again now, Monique, he once said on Instagram. But 50 Cent is not the only one who desires a genuine apology from Perry. Following Will Smith's apology to Janet Hubert, Monique requested that the creator of Sistas to take note and tell the world that she'd never done anything. Perhaps Tyler Perry, who has admitted in private that he was wrong, will follow suit and be man enough to apologize in public, he promised. We'll work on Oprah and Lionsgate a little later, she said at the time. P.S. Tyler, you won E People's Choice Award for being the people's champ for your body of work. Tell the truth about a woman named Monique who did nothing wrong and be a champion for the individuals who supported your career for years. Anyway, it looks like 50 Cent is giving Tyler Perry some extra time to right his wrongs before he starts going after him online, which is not something he usually does. You see, few artists have mastered the art of trolling quite like Curtis 50 Cent Jackson. The rap mogul has built a reputation not only for his charm topping hits, but also for his relentless trolling of fellow artists. There's nobody in control of me. Like, I do what I want to do. Whether through social media jabs or outright provocations, 50 Cent has become synonymous with stirring the pot in the entertainment industry. Here are some instances where 50 Cent's trolling antics made headlines and left his targets reeling. Perhaps no feud in hip-hop history is as notorious as the one between 50 Cent and J. Rule, stemming from a clash between their respective record labels Murder Inc. and G-Unit in the early 2000s. The animosity between these two artists has been well documented. 50 Cent 
Dylan's trolling of Ja Rule has reached legendary status, with the rapper using every opportunity to mock his rival. From diss tracks like Wonksta to relentless social media taunts, 50 Cent has made it clear that he has no love lost for Ja Rule. One of the most memorable instances of 50 Cent's trolling came during the height of their feud when he purchased 200 front row tickets to a Ja Rule concert just to leave them empty. I was like, how much are the tickets? <laughs> $15, I said, okay, give me the first four rows. <laughs> how, many, how, many, how many seats is that? Like, it's gotta be like 200 seats. That's dying, but like 3,000. This audacious move not only embarrassed Jay Rule, but also cemented 50 Cent's reputation as the king of trolling in hip hop. Another artist who found himself in 50 Cent's crosshairs is Rick Ross. The feud between these two rappers escalated quickly, with both trading insults and threats in their music and interviews. However, it was 50 Cent's relentless trolling that truly set their beef apart. In one infamous incident, 50 Cent obtained a S-tape featuring Rick Ross's former girlfriend and proceeded to mock him mercilessly on social media. The rapper posted memes and derogatory comments, further fueling their feud. Despite attempts to downplay the situation, Rick Ross was unable to escape 50 Cent's trolling, which undoubtedly took a toll on his public image. Even outside the realm of hip-hop, 50 Cent has proven himself to be a master troll. One of his most high-profile targets outside of the music industry is boxing legend Floyd Mayweather. The two former friends turned bitter enemies with 50 Cent launching a barrage of attacks on Mayweather through social media and public appearances. From questioning Mayweather's reading abilities to mocking his wealth and lifestyle, 50 Cent pulled no punches in his trolling of the boxing champion. Their feud played out in public for years, with both men engaging in a war of words that captivated fans and the media alike. While their relationship may have soured, 50 Cent's trolling of Mayweather remains etched in the annals of pop culture history. Then we have Kanye West. In the world of rap, few artists are as polarizing as Kanye West. Known for his outspoken nature and larger-than-life persona, Kanye has often found himself at the center of controversy. However, even he was not immune to 50 Cent's trolling antics. During the height of their respective careers, 50 Cent and Kanye West engaged in a friendly competition to see whose album would sell more copies. While Kanye emerged victorious in terms of sales, 50 Cent used the opportunity to poke fun at his rival relentlessly. From mocking Kanye's fashion choices to questioning his sanity, 50 Cent's trolling of Kanye West added an extra layer of drama to their already intense rivalry. Last but certainly not least, we have Meek Mill, another rapper who fell victim to 50 Cent's trolling prowess. The feud between these two artists began when Meek Mill accused 50 Cent of using ghostwriters, prompting a swift and ruthless response from the rap mogul. In typical fashion, 50 Cent took to social media to mock Meek Mill, posting memes and disparaging comments for all to see. The trolling reached a peak when 50 Cent purchased billboard space in Meek Mill's hometown of Philadelphia to promote the mixtape of one of Meek Mill's rivals, further escalating their beef. But out of all the trolling the rapper has done, Diddy seems to have become 50's favorite social media target, especially after the recent lawsuits that came his way. In January, the power executive producer mocked the bad boy boss for choosing not to attend the 2024 Grammy Awards. Though he was invited as he was amongst the nominees, a representative for Puff confirmed that he would not attend the ceremony, despite earning his first nomination in 20 years. Posting a screenshot on Instagram of Hip Hop DX's report into the matter, 50 commented, Wait Puff, I think you should go. They not gonna give you no trophy, LMAO, get the F out of here. The G-Unit leader previously teased buying the Revolt Network after the allegations forced Puffy to step down from his role as chairman. I'll buy that from you Playboy for the low because you know Cadillac and AT&T gonna pull out, Fifth joked on X. I'll give you a few dollars for it now. Sell it to me, then we can be friends. I'm serious, call my phone. And earlier this month, Fifth went at Puff again during a show in Phoenix. After he was forced to cancel a show at the Phoenix venue last year due to a heat warning, 50 had the crowd in the palm of his hand when the topic quickly switched to the bad boy boss. After defending his decision to postpone his previous concert and joking about the harsh criticism he received online because of it, 50 said, I love you, why don't you love me back? Where is the love? He then stopped himself by saying, hold on, hold on, we don't want too much love. You know what happened to brother love, let's keep it down, not too much love. In any case, when he is not trolling every artist online, 50 Cent is busy building an empire that might one day take over other empires like Tyler Perry Studios. 50 has gone full mogul mode. 
he has embarked on a mission to revolutionize black entertainment, to challenge the empire Perry had built, and what better way to do so than by starting his own production company? Enter G-Unit and Television Inc., a venture that promises to disrupt the status quo and redefine black storytelling. But let's not kid ourselves. When Fiff started his company, he knew he was entering the lion's den. How could he compete with the behemoth that was Tyler Perry Studios, with its decades of experience and its catalog of iconic films and TV shows? Well, 50 Cent had a trick up his sleeve, and it came in the form of a 985-000 square foot studio he acquired for his future film and television endeavors. And boy, has 50 Cent delivered. G-Unit and Television Inc. churns out hit after hit, including Power, Power Book 2, Ghost, Power Book 3, Raising Canaan, Power Book 4, Force, and Black Mafia Family. These shows, anchored in the authentic narratives of black individuals, are a testament to 50 Cent's determination to reshape the landscape of black entertainment. But even outside of his success on those shows, which are predominantly based on the reality of black people across social levels, the rapper has tried to explore other fields but was met with roadblocks by the elites of the industry. Despite having numerous projects in the works, one effort 50 won't be going forward on as of now is his series on NFL agent Nicole Lynn. Lynn represents several stars including Philadelphia Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts, who recently netted a deal worth nearly $255 million. In a rant on Twitter after news of that deal broke, 50 slammed stars for passing up on his show. Nicole Lynn is no joke, I told stars they didn't listen, they paid for development then had a change of heart. Now you know I'm gonna sell this show in no time. GLG Greenlight Gang Bullseye I don't miss. 50 Cent wrote in the post's caption. What's more, fueled by his mission to dethrone Perry from his throne of influence, 50 Cent has also inked deals left and right. WeTV came into the picture partnering with the rap mogul to launch the investigative series Hip Hop Homicides. This show promised to delve into the dark underbelly of the hip hop world, unearthing the shocking deaths of rising celebrity stars. But wait, there's more! 50 Cent isn't content with just television domination. He set his sights on the silver screen too. A partnership with Lucid Media led to an unscripted crime series set to debut on Peacock. And as if that weren't enough, 50 Cent and his mentor Eminem are cooking up a TV adaptation of the semi-autobiographical film, Eight Mile. This man is on a roll, and no one could deny his forceful presence in the industry. However, 50 Cent's ambitions extend beyond traditional formats. He is set to produce an animated black superhero film series titled Trill League, in collaboration with Lionsgate Television. This move solidified his position as a multifaceted influencer, determined to reshape not just the way stories were told, but also the very stories themselves. In any case, only time will tell if the rapper will manage to overtake Tyler Perry once and for all. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.